You're listening to the Chapter a Day Audio Bible. I'm John Stonge, and today we're in Genesis chapter 14, and we'll be reading from the New English Translation. At that time, Amraphel, king of Shinar, Arioch, king of Elisar, Kador Laomer, king of Elam, and Tidal, king of nations, went to war against Beru, king of Sodom, Beersha, king of Gomorrah, Shinab, king of Adma, Shemeber, king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, that is, Zoar. These last five kings joined forces in the valley of Sidim, that is, the Salt Sea. For twelve years they had served Kador Laomer, but in the thirteenth year they rebelled. In the fourteenth year, Kador Laomer and the kings who were his allies came and defeated the Rephaites in Ashtaroth Karnaim, the Zuzites in Ham, the Emites in Shava Kiriathame, and the Horites in their hill country of Seir, as far as El Paran, which is near the desert. Then they attacked En Mishpat, that is Kadesh, again and they conquered all the territory of the Amalekites, as well as the Amorites, who were living in Hazazon Tamar. Then the king of Sodom, the king of Gomorrah, the king of Adma, the king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, that is, Zoar, went out and prepared for battle. In the valley of Sidim they met Kador Laomer, king of Elam, Tidal, king of nations, Amraphel, king of Shinar, and Arioch, king of Alassar. Four kings fought against five. Now the valley of Sidim was full of tar pits. When the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled, they fell into them, but some survivors fled to the hills. The four victorious kings took all the possessions and food of Sodom and Gomorrah and left. They also took Abram's nephew Lot and his possessions when they left, for Lot was living in Sodom. A fugitive came and told Abram the Hebrew. Now Abram was living by the oaks of Mamre the Amorite, the brother of Eshcol and Aner. All these were allied by treaty with Abram. When Abram heard that his nephew had been taken captive, he mobilized his 318 trained men who had been born in his household, and he pursued the invaders as far as Dan. Then, during the night, Abram divided his forces against them and defeated them. He chased them as far as Hobah, which is north of Damascus. He retrieved all the stolen property. He also brought back his nephew Lot and his possessions, as well as the women and the rest of the people. After Abram returned from defeating Kador Laomer and the kings who were with him, the king of Sodom went out to meet Abram in the valley of Shaveh, known as the king's valley. Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. Now he was the priest of the Most High God. He blessed Abram, saying, Blessed be Abram by the Most High God, creator of heaven and earth. Worthy of praise is the Most High God, who delivered your enemies into your hand. Abram gave Melchizedek a tenth of everything. Then the king of Sodom said to Abram, Give me the people and take the possessions for yourself. But Abram replied to the king of Sodom, I raise my hand to the Lord, the Most High God, creator of heaven and earth, and vow that I will take nothing belonging to you, not even a thread or the strap of a sandal. That way you can never say, It is I who made Abram rich. I will take nothing except compensation for what the young men have eaten. As for the share of the men who went with me, Aner, Eshkol, and Mamre, let them take their share. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word, and we thank you for the privilege that it is to be able to read it together today. And Lord, we're thankful for the things that you teach us in this portion of your word. We can see that you were allowing your people to experience victory in the midst of difficulty. It's clear that you were protecting Abram, and you continued looking after him, because through his offspring, this world would be blessed. 
And Lord, we know that as we look through these chapters in the book of Genesis, we see all sorts of hints and clues and foreshadowing that's meant to point our hearts to your Son, Jesus Christ. And we see that again here in Genesis 14, particularly in the reference to Melchizedek. We know that later in Scripture, when we get into the book of Hebrews, this portion of Scripture is quoted in Hebrews 7 to indicate that it was foreshadowing your son when it made reference of Melchizedek, king of Salem, which means the king of peace. In Hebrews, we're told that Melchizedek was without father and mother, without genealogy, without beginning of days or end of life, but was like the Son of God and remains a priest for all time. So again, when we look at this portion of Scripture from Genesis, when we understand it in its totality, we realize that this is a portion of Scripture that you're using to point our hearts to the ultimate High Priest, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our Messiah. So we're grateful that you do this, Father, and we're grateful that you illustrate through the protection that you were giving to Abraham ways in which you protect us as well. And ultimately, Father, we recognize that through faith in your Son, we are ushered into your kingdom. and We are kept in your protective hands forever. So we thank you for these things, and we thank you for the assurances that you give to us of your presence with us right now. We commit this day to your care, and we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks again for listening to the Chapter a Day Audio Bible. Once a week, typically on Tuesdays, we email our listeners a brief devotional and a word of encouragement through our newsletter. If you'd like to start receiving our newsletter in your inbox, please visit DesireJesus.com and click on the newsletter link to sign up. Thanks again for listening, and have a wonderful day.